Hello, everyone. Welcome to Epic Work Items Migration Sync Weekly. It's 23rd November, and uh, we have the first issue specific discussion uh, left by Donald, so I'll verbalize. So are we still aligned on the decision made regarding a unidirectional sync? Last week, we had some discussions that made it seem that we would not be able to satisfy all product requirements for migration without point-in-time sync. Either way, let's document the decision in the description of Felipe's update epic. So anyone want to weigh in? Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think I comment uh, below. It's hard to, to tell if it's possible to go with unidirectional sync now because we have some issues. And uh, for example, the last one is we need to see uh, epics, legacy epics, actually work item epics, the new ones in the legacy APIs. And for that, we have to ensure I, uh, the IDs are unique uh, between the tables. So this is something we are trying to discuss. And one of the options to fix that is having um, bidirectional sync. So uh, I think to answer Jonas' question, we need to wait to figure out how we are going to deal with all fields listed in the epic that he posted the link. So yeah, it's hard to tell right now. Uh, I left a question there on the actual epic. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, but I was wondering if it's possible to avoid bidirectional sync anyway, because um, like, do the IIDs need to be unique or does it matter at all? Because you basically have two objects, right? Like you have, when, when somebody looks at an epic through, say, for example, the legacy API or the epics uh, URL, right? They're looking for a legacy epic. Um, but if we would sync the IID of legacy epics to a new value on the work item, which is like legacy object IID, then they wouldn't be need to be unique, or would they? Uh yeah. I, I these have to be unique within a given namespace. So like if we're talking about a group, they have to be unique between objects created in that group, right? Um, not child groups, but within that specific group. Um, but like, I'm, I'm not sure how we're going to do it. Like my understanding is because we don't have any work items at group level yet. If we were to first introduce epics, we can kind of migrate the exact IIDs as well, like given that you, basically are moving in new objects, nothing is still there, so you should not have any conflict. Um, so like ideally you can probably even retain the legacy IIDs on work item epics. But then again, uh, yeah. if there are any 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 issues with that. So we yeah. can we can preserve uh, legacy EIDs on work item epics, uh, and we have the benefit that we can assume that at this point there are no work item epics yet, so there shouldn't be any conflict in IIDs at this point. But the problem is that uh, assume once migration is finished, then we will have uh, some legacy epics, which are migrated to work item epics. But then what happens when new work item epic is created from the work item, from work item epic side? We will, we will still need to basically keep EID uniqueness from legacy API point of view. I'm I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Like so, the the, re the product requirement uh, is that once uh, migration is finished, uh, we should uh, customers should still be able to see all epics, even legacy epics or newly created work item epics through the legacy epics API. 
So we will need to basically provide internal ID, EEID, through the API, legacy EPIC API namespace. And this EID will need to be unique, yeah, both for legacy EPICs and for, for work item EPICs. So we need uniqueness across legacy EPICs and new work item EPICs. Yeah, more than that, they will have to be the same. So like if we are, so the, the problem the, from my perspective is like we should not allow adding or creating both legacy and work item epics at the same time. So like we, we, we have to either allow one or the other and not both at the same time. Yes. And now if you do that, you basically have a either situation when you where you have epic legacy epic and work item epic that both have the same ID or you have the situation where you have a a new work item epic that doesn't have a corresponding legacy epic anymore because it, because it was created after the back filling um so at that point the legacy api should be looking up in the issues table basically in the work items not not in the legacy epics table, right? Like once we move on to creating work items epics, then the API should already basically be tuned to look into, into the new table because otherwise you'll just be missing um, the things there. So, so I think the uniqueness should be there. Um, the, 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 the complicated part is how you make that transition seamless basically and and like not not break any customer uh, backward compatibility and, and, and things like that. But otherwise I think that should be the, the IDs, if that's being used, because I think in API, in REST APIs, we also retur return like the, the actual global ID, those will be different. And and I'm not sure that's a problem or not. Um, from, from a UI perspective and user perspective, it's less of a problem, but from a, from a integration kind of like when you have some APIs that that's using the um, global ideas that may be a problem, but I'm not I'm not sure how big that of a problem that may be, because we're using both. I think in REST, I think we may be using both to identify um, items. Thing is, any yeah. migrated epic might not have an available identical IID because the user might have created tasks or something that have already taken up that that numerical space right so we have to have like a legacy object id, ID or something some value like that how how would Not tasks, really how, how would i mean because ids I, I i didn't follow that job uh, well, yeah, well, I'm going to say, sorry, I'm just ahead, saying Mark. that uh, we currently have a feature flag uh, to create uh, work items at the group level. So we currently have control over that. And in theory, we have no customers that have created task or any other work item. So we should be an, at IAD zero and have no conflict on a lot of them when we migrate. Of course, we, we have some group level work items that we have created at the plan group but i think that i mean those are just test work items and we could probably remove them if if we migrate the id so so no what they're saying is, is i think it's correct uh, as long as we're behind the future flag we have no iid conflicts and if we decide to backfill the iids we we could do it without any conflict just because namespaces are clean, completely have no work item IIDs. We we can't guarantee that people haven't switched that feature flag on. So we'll have to delete um, we'll have to delete um on self hosted instances any group level objects that they've created. Uh is that something so that we can do? Yeah, we can put it in a migration and put it as part of the uh backfilling operation that it first cleans out the table uh, of group level work items. It's yeah, but I, like I think that should be okay, right? Like that is feature flagged, but it's not it's not advertised as as something to be used. It's it's totally normal, I think, to to just remove those because like 
I think we don't exactly integrate that into the product in any way. So even if someone tried it out as an experiment, that should be okay to clean up, right? For self-managed, I mean. Yeah, it, yeah. it should be. And that includes .com as well, because we've surely created some during testing. I don't even think it's uh, that it's acceptable. I think it's a necessity at this point um, that we would remove those because otherwise we'll get collisions. Um, so I think like somebody needs to take this, to be honest, who has capacity and come up with a proposal for the next meeting. Um, does anyone in the meeting currently have capacity? And Amanda, are you from the product side? Are you happy to donate some capacity to this? Yeah, definitely happy to help. Okay, if we've no volunteers, I'll reach out to the wider uh, working group membership and look for somebody there instead. No, I could do it. No, I, I wasn't sure if you were asking for uh, an engineer. Uh, but yeah, I could look into... into. It would be about uh, backfilling IADs with the exact value from the legacy epics, right? Well, we need a proposal, basically, that satisfies all the requirements, which is like, how would we... Uh, well, you can, um, Felipe, you linked a discussion here, right? Uh, there's a discussion in Workstream 2 under IID. So Mario, all the context is in there, but we need a solution basically that gets around the problem that uh, work item epics created from legacy epics might have a different IID. And then what happens with new work item epics that are created going forward? How do the legacy APIs access those right is that right yeah and Felipe yep it does make sense I can look into that thanks I'll add you as the person to update for next week Mario if you don't mind sorry Kushal this is your meeting I just was. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was, I was, I was uh, just uh, writing this something. Yeah, so the next point uh, from Donald is <clears throat> where should we discuss the plan for what issue dot epic API GraphQL and rest both will look like? This will inform the decision on whether or not just a second on whether or not we can use existing issue API in the first iteration of epics to work items. So to expand further on this particular question, we are looking at how we are going to update uh, issue dot epic graphql response so that it can either be restructured to accommodate work item response type or are we going to update this endpoint so that it points to the new data source particularly the work items table so that the rest of the front end apps do not require any refactor and i have a follow up point uh, which is closely related to that but if anyone wants to chime in so in last week we also did discuss that if we don't want to uh, update existing endpoints right away to start consuming work items in the structure that the work items objects are, we can perhaps update existing endpoints and both GraphQL and REST so that they point to work items table where the response remains as it is and the endpoints and queries continue to work. And as a result, our existing front-end apps would work out of the box without any uh, refactor required immediately as a part of feature parity. So in case uh, anyone wants to uh, take this discussion async as a part of one of the work streams, uh, happy to do that. The follow-up that I have around this is uh, right now, if you go to uh, group.epics API, it supports two additional parameters to include ancestor work items as well as descendant work items. We would need a similar feature for group level work items query so that it has a parity with epics API. Now, the question here is, depending on which approach we take, either we would have to update group.workitems query, or we would need to make epic.workitems, uh, group.epics query to be compatible with work items. Because both of these things will determine on whether migrated issues or legacy issues will be able to see 
all the epic work item types within the epic drop down that you see in the sidebar so if, if in in case that sounds complicated feel free to uh, raise I'll, I'll go ahead and quickly show what exactly i'm referring to here do we have an issue for this discussion i only see a slack thread uh, yeah, so in the Slack thread that uh, we had a uh, discussion on yesterday, uh, I think Heinrich created an issue for this uh, to add that support. But based on my conversation with Donald earlier today, uh, we realized that it might not be as straightforward. And the issue that we are uh, discussing right now is in fact closed. Uh, but just a second, let me paste it here. So here is the issue. And it is currently closed. Uh, I think uh, it is closed due to the spike issue that we have created, which is, I think is a subtask and not an issue. So spike task is here. And in case it helps, I can uh, do a quick screen share and explain what I'm referring to. Yeah, please do. Okay, sure. Just a second. Uh, just to clarify, uh, mm -hmm. would it make sense to just update front end to use the GraphQL work items uh, API instead of uh, trying to make changes in yes. the in legacy API? Yes, so that would be possible. And in fact, we have already introduced parent dropdown on work items, which we are going to reuse for epic work item types. The thing is that group.workitems query itself doesn't support including ancestors and descendants. So uh, let me share my screen and I'll uh, show you what exactly we are putting uh, to. The... So for instance, this is one issue. And if you look at the requests that we make here. So if I go to GraphQL network, let me clear it. So when we open this dropdown, the GraphQL request that is sent, it includes these two parameters, include ancestor groups and include descendant groups. What this tells to this query is all the groups which are under GitLab org, any epics which are belonging to the child groups of GitLab org needs to be populated in this dropdown. Similarly, uh, uh, so that is for the ancestor group. So if you see that we have passed include descendant groups as false, which means that we do not want to explicitly include epics which belong to child groups of GitLab org. But for instance, if I go to GitLab org group and uh, visit one of its child group, say for instance, AI powered, and uh, go to one of the epics, uh, one of the issues, I hope we don't have to mark it, mark the meeting as confidential. At least all the issues that I'm accessing are all public. Yeah, so see, uh, here we have multiple levels of hierarchy. We have GitLab org, AI powered, AI framework, and team HQ. So we are like four levels deep. Here, uh, again, similarly, when we uh, open Epic's dropdown, the query that fires, it includes uh, the same parameter that include ancestor groups. At this point, what is happening here is all the epics that you are seeing here, these epics may also be coming from parent groups like GitLab org, AI powered and AI framework. These, two these three groups may have epics and those epics are showing up here. But when we look at uh, groups.workitems API, it currently doesn't support these parameters. So what happens is anytime one visits a parent dropdown for a current group, they'll only be able to see work items which are populated from the current group itself. Any work item which belongs to either child group or a parent group is not populated here. So to be able to migrate a work item and still continue supporting this sort of dropdown via parent dropdown, we would need support for these two parameters. So uh, just wondering like what would be the effort like? And again, we don't need to discuss it sync like in terms of effort itself. We just wanted to make sure that there is awareness uh, around this. So I hope uh, that would answer the question on what we are looking to solve here. Yeah, so, yeah. so from a high level idea, including the, even at the group level, including the ancestors should not be an issue. Um, it may be a big issue if you want to include descendants because 
at a given group level, you can have like unlimited numbers of descendants and, and loading all those epics can be a huge performance. Like we, we cannot cap it to really load everything from there. So it's both an engineering, but also a product question, I would say, in that do we really need to load or to have the cap capability there to load the descendants? Well, we'll still need to implement that anyway, because like in lists, you probably want to do that, um, even though it will be paginated and so on. So I think we still need to implement that capability of, of including ancestors and descendants. So that can be something that we can work on. And then if, if that solves the problem of reusing the work items API, I think that's the easy path forward. And yeah, one thing to note is that Sorry, Henrik is already working on the descendant part that uh, Alexandru, as Alexandru said, is the most difficult one. So uh, doing the, uh, sorry, ancestors one would be easy after that one, I think, whenever we get there. Yeah, I would so also expect that, that we should be able to add these parameters once uh, the support is implemented internally for including all these descendant and ancestors. I was curious if it would be uh, feasible with our existing permission model, but uh, it seems that uh, Heinrich is on, on track with this and he plans to basically use the same approach which is used for epics finder uh, for listing epics uh, in the wall descendant tree. So from the product perspective, are we going to run into a situation where someone is trying to set a parent of a particular work item that belongs to one of the descendant groups or descendant projects rather? When you say descendant projects, what do you mean? Yeah. So for example, I'm on a GitLab org group and I'm viewing an epic or any work item, for example, perhaps objective. And I want to set its parent that belongs to one of the child groups of GitLab org. Yes, we should use. We should expect that users are going to want to set a project, a, a parent, from anybody in the ancestry above where that record lives, not the immediate parent only. So okay, so not, uh, yeah, so. Long, right? Yeah, but, but we do allow both directions. Uh, the, there's no limitation in the hierarchy, so you can add a parent epic from a subgroup at the moment. Oh, I see what you're saying. So I if, think that's the question if, from Kushal. I think it, ju okay, it just won't so, list them. Yes, right? exactly. Yep, it wouldn't list if them I because have, of large groups. Have been, I just want to make sure I understand. If I, if I have five levels. And my record that I'm viewing is in level two. Can I cr add a parent from level four? That's the question. Yes, we should. Exactly. Yes, we should allow that. Um, but it is perfectly fine to allow it with pasting of URL only. If you want to limit what you're displaying for purposes of uh, performance or some other reason. It, it does feel a bit of an anti-pattern, though, in, in the sense that if your organization is structured hierarchical in a hierarchical order, right, to to have a parent from a lower level feels like a bit of a contradiction. At least, like, just I understand that we we want to allow that, and maybe there are some customers and models that do that, but it feels a bit of a reverse sort of situation where you have. Because like in a hierarchy, you, you, you'd consider someone sitting at the top is the, the higher level, the, the, the more generic kind of things are defined. And then having something deeper into the structure doesn't seem like being a parent to whatever other work items you may have. But it's just an opinion. I'm not sure that's, that's yeah. kind of a, a best practice thing. But again, we, we can probably allow it when... I can see some customers doing that. Um, I'm not sure if that adds to the confusion or not, but, but just saying, just just bringing it out there. It's too late anyway. 
<laughs> We're already yeah, that's there. already so. supported for at least a year. I, yeah, I'm I'm happy to give use cases of where it does make sense, um, but it sounds like it's not needed. One thing that I would add is that we would want parents from lateral groups as well in the future. I think that's not currently supported, and so it's not considered parity. But if it's an easy to add to the logic, that would be a nice thing. And again, it could be by pasting URL only. It doesn't have to be by lookup. Yeah, that, that's not supported at the moment because we don't allow pasting URLs and the searches, okay. every drop down we have is always within the group or the project. There's not cross group functionality from searching, searching. Because, of, because of performance. So the only way right. is pasting a URL or using um, quick action, but that's still not supported yet until we have references okay. for group work items. Could pasting the title be supported? Or no? No, not yet. No. Okay. Okay. I wanted to reiterate on this. Uh, previously, we mentioned that Heinrich works on listing uh, the st uh, epics in the standalone groups, but I realized that it's slightly different from this use case when you want to list all epics in the epics hierarchy in case that sub epics can be from all the different groups other than descendant groups uh, for the group uh, you are at. So there is a potential concern that uh, the use case Hen Henrik works on, which is basically listing epics on the epic list page in the group, may not address this issue. But I think that we, we don't have a place where we would list or wall epic uh, three of descendants, we always list only one level of uh, sub epics. Uh, there shouldn't be a case where we need to list everything, basically, right? I believe in groups, we are listing all the descendant group epics as well, right? Yes, in groups, right. this is fine, but it's different from listing epics hierarchy if oh, okay. we allow completely free uh, sub epics from all the different uh, groups, yeah, cross cross group references for sub epics, because then we need to check permission one by one for each each epic we want to list. Yeah, but I think what what, what the man suggested allowing to post in the URL that that kind of solves it and makes the search fast and, and, and so on. So like if we can extend that functionality of listing whatever epics you have in this group or subgroups, and then if you paste an URL, you can you can identify it and check it. It should be even much faster than than having to go through the the listing thing. Um, so yeah, if if we don't have to list it and, and paste an URL, that should be a a good use of that. All right, cool. That's the next item. Um, so firstly, uh, thanks Eugenia, Felipe, and Alexandru for stepping up. I was really uh, heartened to see this, that you would step up and do this and like uh, put your hand up and take responsibility for one of these things. So like, thanks a lot. Um, I think one of the big challenges with this whole project is in fact a coordination challenge. Like it's not just the technical challenge, but um, there are it is possible to start one work stream before another has finished, but in order to do that, I think you discussed this last week, in order to do that, like information has to flow uh, very well between the three work streams. So I was going to ask that, um, could I put headers in section one for each work stream and ask for weekly updates from each of you in progress, even if there is no real progress to report, just so that the rest of the team can understand, um, can understand where we're at exactly. Um, with each work stream and then also it's an opportunity for you to reach out and ask for help if you have blockers decisions needed things like that um does that sound okay yeah so i didn't I exactly know. get i do you mean updates in this document then because my first understanding was updates in the um epic that donald 
created. So I get now I'm now I'm kind of understanding that you want you suggest updates in this document, right? Yeah, specifically oh, okay. in the in the meeting. I mean, you don't have to attend, but that's true of all GitLab meetings. Like, you just you could leave a a short written update under the under the top part. I've I've been cheeky and I've gone ahead and I've added the headings anyway. Um, if you have a strong strong objection, maybe you could let me know and I'll remove them. Um, I think it would also be good practice to be honest. Like Mario has a takeaway from this meeting. Like for anyone who has a takeaway, to to add a, a header item for the next meeting. But these would be three recurring headers until the work uh, until the work streams are closed off one by one. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, additionally, uh, carry forward any updates from these three uh, points within the document to the weekly uh, update epic itself so that anyone can just visit the epic instead of viewing it in there. I want to add as well, if this starts to feel more like a management activity than, uh, than, than a, a technical activity, then let us know and we'll find manager DRIs for these things instead. But that also adds one additional point of communication where information can be lost. So um, if, if we can keep it efficient, keep them short and just the main purpose is just to make sure everyone in the meeting is aware of um, any of how the work streams are going, like what progress has been made. And then also like that we can act on any blockers that you have quickly. We, we have, like I said, like 18 people or something signed up in the working group. That's a lot of capacity that we can use to help you uh, keep your work unblocked and keep these projects unblocked. Amanda, you want to verbalize your point, although Gabe hasn't joined, so. Okay. Uh, actually, I have a follow-up point to John to ask. I wonder, um, sorry to challenge, but I wonder if we couldn't do the same request on the actual work stream issue itself and just link to it in this doc because there's viewers outside of this meeting that shouldn't have to find our Google Doc to find information. And I just, I think it would be nice to see the work stream issue with the status at the top for anybody who's viewing that issue. Yeah, it works for me. Um, what's the proposal that there would be the latest status in the description of that issue or just- Yeah, in the going? description, just a section in the description that's like latest update or status or something like that. And or, then or perhaps, yeah, or perhaps I can add a row to the table uh, in which we post weekly updates for each individual work stream because that epic is publicly accessible and is also linked in our handbook page for this work group. Yeah, w whatever works. Yeah. Uh, are each of the DRIs okay with that? I think it's the same thing, just in a different place. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. I I can do both here and there. It's really a copy paste kind of scenario. So yeah, I can just link the the correct work stream then from <laughs> from the template. It's no big deal. Um, and then people can self serve from the issue. I think that's a good idea. Thanks. Yeah. It it also keeps a bit of a better history, I guess, given the changes in the description. So yeah. Okay, the last thing was just to ask Gabe this question live, which I've already pinged him on the issue, so it's okay. It's just a follow up, to Eugenia, to uh, the question about inherited dates. Um, I think the answer is if we had planned to use inherited dates on other work item types other than epics, then it should be included in core. But if it is exclusive to epics, then it should be E only. But TBD. A response. I have one additional question on this one. Do we want to rename inherited dates to roll updates because that's how they actually behave? This is we'll have, something we'll I have confusion. We'll have confusion yeah. with the inherited dates that behave like roll up functionality with the roll up weights or um, what do we have? Counts which do behave the same way, but now those are called roll-ups and these ones are called inheritance. And, and there is, I think there will be confusion both on the customer side and on engineering side as well. Um, so 
I, I, this is a good time to, if we want to rename it, this would be a good time to, to do that. From a front end customer user perspective, we don't want the name changed at the moment. We understand that it's confusing, but we will be revisiting this post migration and we will be making bigger changes to the way this thing works, including the naming. So we want to roll that all out at the same time. If you want to change it on the back end, I defer to the engineering on that. Yeah, that, that was my, my question. And uh, I don't know what the decision from Casio, but in, in my opinion, this should have been, the back end should have been renamed because if in one year we change the front end, then we're gonna have again, uh, the endpoints of GraphQL would be with the wrong name. And changing all the naming, uh, even from a table we are creating, um, I think it, we should start with the correct name and expose the old name until we change it. Yeah, I-, I My only I, concern, sorry. Go ahead. My only concern with doing that on the back end would be consistency from things that customers can access, like the API naming convention, if anything is written to system notes and it's called something other than what it's currently called, that sort of thing. So as long as that can be preserved, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I think the, the, the only problem I can think of is the name of the endpoint because GraphQL is a public endpoint. So they will see it's called roll dates and in the UI it says inherited dates. So that might lead to confusion. The alternative is to it with uh, inherited name. And then in a year or whenever we change it, we deprecate the endpoints and use the correct name. I, I think we can use the updated name and, and just document the fields in a way that is clarifying that it's actually the, the inherited UI feature, but we're calling it, the field is called roll up, whatever for this kind of functionality. Anyway, yeah, we can figure it out, I think. Uh, I think it will be much more difficult to rename the endpoints afterwards. Um, because that means the breaking change. So you can kind of have to maintain now at least two fields for the same thing if you want to rename it and so on. But yeah, as long as we don't make changes on the UI, I guess, and we are pretty explicit on the API level, I think that we should be okay. All right, uh, anyone else want to discuss anything? We have one minute left. Okay, so let's call it an end. And uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Have a good rest of the week. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone who's celebrating. They're already gone.